Hello YouTube, welcome to Just Right Gaming, where our gaming skills are not too noob, not too uber, but just right. Hello everybody, I'm pretty excited today because I am playing Asagao Academy, and to be honest, I'm not really sure if I'm saying that right, but whatever, I'm gonna auto through this. Auto, I check you. I check you? Okay, maybe it doesn't auto unless... Will it skip? Do I have to have already done this? Will it do it? I am unclear. I check you? Maybe not. Uh, anyway, so I'm actually gonna just like kind of skip through some of this beginning dialogue because I've already played- or no, I haven't already played this. This is the first time I'm ever playing this, but I have watched a few people, a few Let's Players, play the beginning of this game. So I've seen uh, PVG do it, I've seen Commander Holly, and I've seen GT Live do like the first 30 minutes or so of this game, give or take. And so to start off with, uh, I, I didn't think very much of this game when I first saw it. I thought it was funny. I was like, oh my gosh, there's actually a dating sim around the guise of normal boots. Like, that's hilarious. And I thought it was really funny to watch some of the people play it, but I mean, I didn't think I'd be doing a let's play of it. I didn't think I'd even play this game until there was one character who I saw and I was like oh my god that one I want that one that one needs to be mine but I mean until now I couldn't bring myself to spend my free time playing this game so I'm gonna record as well so I feel less bad about myself so instead of just playing a dating sim game around the normal boots guys I am going to record myself playing a game revolved around dating the normal boots guys okay so essentially I've seen this a couple of times uh, the main character Hana she's on a train she meets a uh, pro Jared who's like oh, he's so amazing and he's got sparklies around him um, and I guess one thing to take away from the intro is that the main character is kind of a wallflower. She doesn't really fit in. Um, also, it's really hard to project yourself onto the main character because from what I've seen, most people do not share a connection with her at all. She's just, she's, she's a little bit ditzy. Uh, to be honest, she's not the sharpest tool in the shed. Uh, indeed. So, this is us arriving at school, we're obviously nervous, we're a transfer student. I thought it would be really funny if this entire school was just like, kind of a, like revolved around YouTube in general. Oh, you must be my roommate! Alright, and this is... Bingo. My roommate, I forget her name, what's her name? <laughs> What is your name, good lady? Yes, you are my roommate. You know, I put I put the text speed on like to medium, but I might put it on to the fastest setting. There's a there's a lot of dialogue, and I'm not quite positive that all of it is relevant. That's why I'm kind of skipping this first part. Mai, that's right. Her name is Mai. All right. So we're just talking. This is uh, the dormitories. It's very cute and pink. Uh, Mai is going to be like our tour guide through this academy. Look at this. This is amazing. Uh, I'll start reading. I'll start actually reading this stuff. Most of the beginning stuff, and I guess this is true for just dating sims or visual novels in general is that there's kind of just 
I don't know, a little bit of a, not necessarily exposition dump, but, uh, like, detail dump, I guess? Like, uh, I'm trying to think of, like, they really set up the environment. I'm, I, I'm not, I can't think of a good way to explain that, but... Yeah, they de they give all the details for the environment. Perfection. All right. <laughs> and I was just enjoying the posters. Like, I didn't actually like this. Didn't click in my head before, but it reminds me of this one magazine. And I'm pretty sure it's like guys and cute animals or something. Oh man, that's the best. Like, whoever thought to put the two like things that chicks like the most and like and combine them genius just perfect absolute genius oh yeah here we learn that Mai was neglected by her parents <laughs> and Hana is like really poor that's what we're gathering from this conversation oh we have a paper crane I think it's a crane so this is also one thing that GT Life pointed out is that they got the um, timing for the lights wrong. So. Like, so it'll say that they're putting up these fun, whatever they're called, lights. What? Twinkle lights or whatever the fuck they're called. But they'll appear before they even talk about it in their dialogue. Not really relevant, though. Not super relevant. Not anything that's going on right now is really relevant, okay? Because what's going on right now is yeah. two chicks talking in a dormitory and all we care about are the normal boots guys that's what we care about <laughs> that laugh though was horrifying anyway uh while we're waiting for them to be done chit chatting away just for your guys' information I am so not good at dating sims slash visual novels and I know you might be thinking how is that possible? They're just dating sims, but I still manage to fail at games with the most minimal gameplay ever. Like, and when I say gameplay, I literally mean, like, you pick one choice out of two options, like, every half an hour or hour or so, and I always choose the wrong answer. I'm so bad at these. It's insane. Uh, and... I don't know. I don't know really how this playthrough is going to go. I don't think I'm going to go after the guy, but the virtual what? guy of Asagao Academy of my dreams yet. <laughs> I might go for one of the other ones. Again, I've only seen like the first like 30 minutes of this game played, so I'm not even really sure how getting the guys works out. I guess we'll figure it out together on Just Right Gaming. Yeah! Anywho. <laughs> Uh, hey, that's, um, Mai was asking Hana, um, if she recognized the guy who was with her on the train to point him out, and it turns out that it's Jared! And we find out now that Jared is, like, God in this school. With his sparkles, see? Ma is blushing up a storm, up a storm. Okay. So I gotta pick a- like, I feel like I'm gonna start playing like the jump rope game where I gotta pick a good spot to like jump in to start reading the dialogue, cause right now I haven't been reading the dialogue the whole time, so I was like, oh, here, oh, uh, oh. You know, you're just like doing those weird- I'm doing those weird hand motions when you're like doing the jump rope, like, oh, now, now, no, oh, now, no, no, okay. Okay. <laughs> Oh, he's saying I'm such a cute girl. Oh my god, that's Jared! She tore her eyes away from him and looked at me. He's so cute. He's the most beautiful guy in school. Oh, Jared. <laughs> oh, Jared. I can't believe he just looked at me. I looked at Mai. Her cheeks were glowing in indecent pink. Why do they all wear those jackets? Aren't all the guys supposed to wear blue blazers as part of their uniform? No, they're allowed to. They're... You know, Jared... Oh, that was a different girl. Uh, the girl turned back around. She was looking at me with sudden interest. 
I... Do I know him? Oh, did I know him? I only talked to him on the train for a few minutes, so not really. We weren't friends or anything. But looking around, my and this girl weren't the only ones who were interested. Everybody seemed to be listening in. They seemed so surprised when he talked to me. Oh, I skipped that last line. All right, so first question to mess up. All right. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Guess so or uh, not really. So I can't remember. I feel like... I feel like it said on the website that there are like 43 different endings. Am I crazy? Was that how many endings there were? Because I feel like there's only seven routes. So how could there be 43 endings? I should double check on that. Anyway, so seven routes. I don't... And also with dating sims, I don't know when my my answers start becoming relevant. I just don't know. It's so hard to say. I get so stressed out. Am I going to get the guy of my dreams or am I just going to be alone the rest of my life? <laughs> Let's go, uh, not really. Oh. She looked up and down. Oh, okay. She looked up and down, sniffed and turned. She sniffed? What is she, a dog? Uh, Mai leaned toward me. Don't mind Mimi. She's just trying to get in with you. Get in with me? Why? Well, you asked me about those guys and their jackets, right? Those are their normal boots, club jackets. There, what? What's Normal Boots Club? <laughs> da 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 da! It's a club we have at school. It's like totally exclusive and full of only the coolest students. I almost said cutest. Same diff. Alright. Well, I guess not same diff, but it would also apply in this situation. They get together and play video games or something. That's about it, actually. You kind of, you know, hit the nail on the head with that one. That one there is John, also known as John Tron. His bird's name is Jock. John is also the president of the drama club here at school. Next to him is PBG. He and John founded the Normal Boots Club together. PBG is one of the best soccer players on our team. Then there's Gerard. People call him the completionist because he's obsessed with completing things. He has the biggest itty bitty kitty collection I've ever seen. Next to him is Jared, also known as Pro Jared. He's a model. Then there's Satchbag, but everyone calls him Satch. He's like crazy smart. Those guys over there are Paul, Nick, and Josh. They write in a column in the newspaper called continue. I realized that I messed that entire sentence up, but I was like, nope, not going back. Can't fix it now. It's too wrong. Uh, Paul, the one standing up, is the student council president. It looks like he's giving him like a little back massage. Like, hey, buddy, let me just get, get those shoulders for you. Yeah. Loosen you up a bit. Oh, yeah. Anyway. And the guy on the end there is Shane. He knows more about video games than anyone, ever. She exhaled a dreamy sigh into her mashed potatoes. <laughs> so, how would someone, you know, join the Normal Boots Club if, say, I don't know, anyone in particular maybe you wanted to try? I play video games. Anyway, uh... You don't choose the boots, Hannah. The boots choose you. What does that mean? Uh, you have to be presented with the boots to be in the club. And they're like super selective. What are the boots? The club has this boot statue. It's like one of their patches. Oh, it's like the one on their patches, but it's gold plated. It's like their mascot, I guess. They do this weird initiation ritual with it. <laughs> ritual? I hear they fill a room with candles and wear those totally creepy robes during initiation. This year two girl said she saw ones and they were all like chanting around the boots and it sounded like they were talking backwards. I don't believe her. And even if it's true, I don't care. If they're in a cult... Wait, if they're a cult... Wait, I don't care if they're a cult because they're really hot. That sentence was super difficult. 
I don't know why. Do they have a lot of friends? I mean, it's a club. They got each other. That's more friends than I have. Fuck. Yeah, tons of friends. I'd say they're the most popular kids in school. I mean, everyone in the school totally looks up to them. I bet they could get any girl in the school, too. Not that I'm saying anything. Not that, you know, what? Mashed potatoes? Or a boy, for that matter, because we're inclusive here. Hey, are you going to eat your cake? I shook my head and pushed the plastic tray across the table to her. For the remainder of lunch, I listened to Mai talk about Jared through mouthfuls of half-dissolved frosting. Back at the dorm, I sorted through the pile of textbooks the school left for me. My radio was playing a poppy tune, equal parts music to static. Got it. I swear, if I ever, if there's ever static on the radio, I'm like, I can't do it. It's gotta, turn it off, turn it off, can't do it. Nope. Uh, Maya fervently scribbled in a notebook at her desk, hunched over it with strikingly poor posture. Hey, hey Maya. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm She didn't bother to look up. Am I supposed to have a textbook for History 309? Uh. Mm -hmm. She scuffled through the papers on her desk before producing a thick textbook. A demure man in powdered wig frowned at me from the cover. Yeah, this one. I sighed. I don't have that one. The school must have missed it. My shrugged and set her textbook back in her pile. They have a bunch at the library. You can just check one out. Where's the library? My ruffled through her notebook and wrote something down. She tore the page out and handed me a crudely drawn map. Oh, Okay, well, I'll be back in a little bit. See, it makes me sad that we literally needed directions to find a library in a school. Like, usually, that's like the easiest thing to find in a school is the library. It's usually the biggest part of the school. Usually, for the most part. And it took me at least 20 minutes to find it. With a map because I was holding it upside down. And apparently the sun was setting, which had some relevant meaning to me not being able to find the library. The library was much larger than I expected. The walls lined... See, then why weren't you able to find it? Um, full to the ceiling with books of all sizes on rough wooden shelves. Intimidated, I headed for the front desk. A recognizably green and gray jacket was bent behind the counter. N normal boots. I briefly considered running away. Hey. Can I help you? Uh, too late. Uh, yeah. The school forgot to give me one of my textbooks. I was told I could get it here. Hmm. Which one is it? Uh, the History 309 textbook. He stepped from behind the counter and motioned. Wow, I really wanted to say mention. My mouth was really mentioned, so I had to like force myself to say motioned. My reading skills are second to none. For me to follow. We dodged between the aisles in a comfortable silence. He seemed friendly enough. I could say something. What was his name again? Shane Gerard John Wow, none of those. No, not John. Maybe Shane or Gerard though. No. Go ahead and name everyone else's name. Satch! I did it, memory. Huh? Oh, um Uh of course he worked here. <laughs> I skipped a line. Oh well. You know what? Don't judge me. He chuckled, dimples appearing in his cheeks. Yeah, I'm the librarian's assistant. It's my second year, and I love it. I get to help people find books that speak to them. His eyes twinkled like a kid's on Christmas. Your book's right down here. He stepped at a row of he stepped at a row of thick, dusty books. Was this all history? And pulled out the book with the powdered wig man I saw earlier. <laughs> uh, thanks. He waved his hand. 
It's nothing. Do you need help with anything else? Uh... I wanted to make a good impression on the Normal Boost Club, but I couldn't come up with anything. No. Thanks. What did he just say? I have no idea what he just said, but I heard something and it was like, what? You're welcome. It was, he didn't say you're welcome, I know that. As we headed back through the cavernous library, my unease melted away. We weren't talking, but just being near him felt like being wrapped in a soft blanket. Because that's how blankets work. You just kind of need a blanket to be nearby to feel like you're wrapped up in it. I resisted the urge to snuggle up to him. We neared the front desk, stepping around a clump of studying students. As we passed, one of them shifted. <laughs> Eh. Something white flew past my face. I like how intense the music just got. A th thick piece of triangle paper lay on my feet. I bent over and picked it up. It was surprisingly heavy. There was a quarter inside of it. You know, usually when I say something was surprisingly heavy, it... I... Okay, I'm, I'm not gonna question it. Not gonna question it. If I was just a hair slower, it would have hit me in the face. <laughs> the students snickered, and I recognized the boys that made fun of my hair this morning among them. God, what grade are they in? Are they, like, middle schoolers? Who the hell does that? Nowadays, we just say horrible things to each other on social media. My heart dropped. I scanned my memory for anything I might have done to offend them, but came up with nothing. My hand started to shake. I hid it behind my back, trying to think of some way to defend myself. Why did you do that? Eh? What do you mean? We were just messing around. Are you suggesting we did it on purpose? I faltered. There was nothing I could say. I was outnumbered. They would twist my words around, no matter what, how straightforward I was. God, she has no backbone. Just nothing. There's nothing there. She is a jello monster. No, I, I'm sorry. One of the boys held out his hand for the paper. I inched closer to give it to him, angry at myself for being so compliant. You're just gonna give him the paper back? And the quarter? At least keep the quarter. Go get a soda at the vending machine or something. I wish I were. A gentle warmth closed over my hand and took the paper from me. Satch examined the paper closely. I see what the problem is. Your aim would be better if you cut the corners before you folded it. He placed the paper on the table. The boy looked at him in sheer awe. Like, this guy is a weirdo. Be careful, though. You almost hit her, and that would have been awful. My hands began to sweat as panic shifted through me, afraid of the response, but... Jeez, we're sorry. We'll be careful next time. Yeah, it, it was an accident. They apologized? Thanks. I appreciate it. He gave them a wide smile and continued off, down the aisles. I followed closely behind, my legs weak. Don't tell me they stopped because of him, simply because I was with him. I wanted to thank him, but my heart was pounding so hard I knew my voice would shake. We reached the front counter and he scanned the history book. My lips trembled as I willed myself to say something, anything to thank him. He tilted his head to the side. What books do you like to read? Oh, uh, fiction? He chuckled. I just finished a good book. I think it might be right up your alley if you don't mind me saying so. He reached under the counter, pulled out a thick green book, and passed it to me. A man in black stood on the front, hugging a woman in royal robes. It's long, but it's one of my favorites. The Princess Betrothed. That sounds like something a high school boy would read. The Princess Betrothed. I don't actually know what grade they're in. I'm gonna guess it's like high school. Gonna guess. Even though most of these... The guys that these are based off of are like out of college or dropped out of college 
I know things can be tough transferring to a new school. If you ever, if you're ever worried, just read this. It'll transport you a hundred miles away in a second. Tears stung my eye, so I ducked my head. Man, no backbone, no sense of direction. Tear up at a fly getting swatted. I mean, Satch. thank you, Satch. For more than just the book. You're welcome. For more than just the book. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't think I got your name. I don't know how much the voice acting is going to come out on the game video, but... My name is Hana Mizuno. I'm a transfer student. Well, it's nice to meet you, Hana. Let me know how you like the book. I will! That couldn't have gone better. Minus guys almost throwing paper at me. Minus me being a total weirdo. Minus me wanting to snuggle up to Satch like he was a blanket. Minus all of that, it went perfectly. Not only was Satch impossibly kind, but being around him felt easy. Refreshing. Like being doused in the mist of a waterfall. Oh gosh, what am I thinking? First he's a blanket and now he's a waterfall. My cheek's hot. I left the library. Two surprisingly heavy books under one arm. You can carry it with two, I mean. I settled into bed, eager to get started with my new reading material, but... Mai was sitting at her desk, carving a pencil idly into the page of a notebook. That is such a weird sentence. Every few minutes she released a long, drawn-out sigh as the lead of her pencil whined against the paper. I lowered my book and took the boot. Is something wrong, Mai? She let out a dreary sigh. I hope Jared notices me this year. Does Jared not know you like him? Mai whirled around in a in feigned shock. What? I don't like Jared. Oh? I closed my book and set it aside, deciding to play along. Uh -oh. Well, have you at least tried talking to him? <laughs> uh, no. I mean, I have before. Why don't you try again? To be honest, though, I don't feel like Hana is one to be saying such things so lightly. I mean, she can barely talk at all, let alone to a boy she likes, so... She bobbed her head from side to side, considering this like it never crossed her mind before. Yeah. Maybe I could just skip that line and just... You know, who cares? Satisfied, I picked my book back up. Agreed. Have you ever had a boyfriend, Hana? What? Huh? Me? No. Never. Really? Really? Never? Hmm. Never. I bet you 10,000 yen that you meet a totally cute boy here and fall in love by the end of the school year. <gasps> You're crazy. I buried my face back into my book, barring my from my further discussion. Fall in love by the end of the year? Me? If I were a betting kind of girl, I'd take that bet. Oh snap. I awoke the next morning. What felt like a lizard in my throat. Mai was already up, shuffling through her school bag with an, an magnet. Oh my god. I can't read, you guys. I can't read. Animatic grin. That's how you say that word. Because I decided that's how you're going to say it. The first day of school. Hana, you're finally awake. Her voice sliced through the air like a knife, and I winced. She was definitely a morning person. Ugh. God. It's time for the first day of school. Aren't you excited? I can't wait to see what's going to happen. What do you mean? Is something special happening today? <laughs> <laughs> something strange always happens on the first day of school, especially to someone like you. She winked. What? Someone like me? You know what I mean. She smiled and started messing with a pile of papers on her desk. Shaking my head, I got out of the bed and pulled my uniform out of my closet. My palms sweat and I held the cold, 
gold vest and blue jacket. Was it really possible for things to be different here than they were at my than they were at home? What if the problem wasn't actually the school? I shook the thoughts out of my head and changed into my uniform. Oh. Hmm? What is it? Aww. You look so cute. Really? R really? He crept up my neck. Yeah. Yeah, completely. Your hair matches your uniform so well cuz pink goes really good with yellow and blue. Fact. You look like a flower blooming straight out of the ground. <laughs> Thank you. Water stung the back. Oh my god. Can you just stop with the waterworks already? Just stop it. Stop. Stop. Stop it. Stop. Why was I getting worked up with something as little as this? I don't know. This is a good question. It's weird. Most people don't fucking start tearing up when someone's like, You look nice today. Is something wrong? <laughs> no, nothing's wrong. I'm just an idiot. Oh, I mean happy. How dumb was that? I started crying at the first sign of someone being nice to me. Yeah. Super weird. The game is like, acknowledging how weird this was, but it still happened. It still happened. I took a deep breath to steady my nerves. <laughs> what an oddly menacing l thud. All the air left my lungs as something like horse hooves slammed against my back. Ugh. You'll do just fine. Don't worry. This is going to be awesome. I stiffly peered over my shoulder. That... That was you? Huh? Mai stood behind me, her hand raised. Somehow she had the strength of a bodybuilder. Nothing, or I just have, like, bones made out of toothpicks. And, you know... I was just about to zip my bag up when I spotted the book Satch gave me lying on my nightstand. Oh no, there's gonna be another choice! <laughs> the Princess Betrothed. He had, he said that if I ever needed to be transported somewhere far away, I could take it with me. It was pretty good so far. Maybe it would be a smart, it would be smart to bring it along just in case I had no one to talk to between class periods. Would I need it for my first day of class? Alright, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? You know what, we went with bottom last time. Let's stick with the bottom. Leave it behind. No, today would be a great day. Wait, today would be a great day. I couldn't give up before I even, okay. You ready? Yeah. Yeah, let's go. He stick with me and you'll be fine. My opened the door and together we stepped into the hallway, merging into a steady flow of chittering girls and fruit flavored perfume. Oh, that hallway has got to smell gnarly. Like a body work store. You can just smell it before you even step inside. Oh my my, I did not know we lived on the same floor. No way! Really? That's so awesome! Now we'll be able to chat up! Whatever happened between you and- The river of girls shifted as we headed down the stairs. Suddenly I found myself surrounded by a bunch of people I didn't know. Oh wow! What a jerk he turned out to be! Mai's exclamation faded into the buzz of voices in the air. Oh no! What would I do if we got separated? I can't- find my way around to school. I can't read maps. I, I don't have a general sense of direction. I I cry instantly. I can't talk to people. I'm just gonna go cry in this corner. Anxiously, I searched the crowd of girls for Mai, but I couldn't find her. Everyone was dressed in the same Asagao uniform. It was difficult to tell anyone apart, and being so short really didn't help. Amen, sister. 
As we turned the last corner down the stairway, I saw a flash of red hair a little ways in front of me. My? I reached between two girls and tapped her on the shoulder. Huh? Oh, um... Uh, who are you? Who are you? The girl's eyes flashed, almost like a jolt of electricity shot through them. Uh, I'm sorry, I thought you were someone else, because you look absolutely nothing like the person I was trying to locate. Sorry! She said nothing and turned away before I knew it. Mai was nowhere to be seen. I could have... I couldn't even hear her chirpy voice. I mean, if you're outside, I mean, you really got separated. Oh, man. I took a deep breath, biting my lip. This wasn't a big deal. I could go to class alone. Yes, most people are capable of doing this in the real world. But I didn't even know where the building was. God. I mean, honestly, you could just follow the other students. That's what I do. I'm lost. Follow everybody else. I reached into my backpack and dragged out my class schedule. Homeroom. 206 Poppy Hall. Which one was Poppy Hall again? Weren't the classrooms on the other side of campus? I picked up a di I picked a direction. Bleh. I picked a direction and began to walk, trying to ignore my rising panic at the thought of arriving late to the first day of class. As a third year, with n where no one knew me, all of the people hey. staring. Hey, you okay? You look a little lost. Someone called out to me and I turned around, almost jumping for joy. When I froze. A normal boots jacket? He was part of the normal boots club? Nah, he just stole the jacket. I could practically feel my tongue swelling in my mouth if this was a normal boots club member. I had to make a good impression. I really want those boots. Look at how normal they are. He was one of the founders, right? Then he must be Jontron. Um, um, yeah, I'm new. I don't know where Poppy Hall is. <laughs> you a freshman? No problem. My class is in Poppy Hall. I'll walk you there. I like how everyone thinks she's a freshman just because of how nervous and awkward and how she doesn't know where she even is at any given point in time. Really? Really? That would be wonderful. Thank you. Was this really happening? He began walking towards a large brick building in an enthusiastic manner, pumping his arms up and down like he was in some kind of a show tune. I fell into step beside him. I didn't notice it when Mai pointed him out to me yesterday, but John Trod had big brown eyes and a warm looking face. He was basically a human puppy. <laughs> he does kind of look like a human puppy. I glanced up at him went out of the corner of my eye. always made me uncomfortable. Something about the ease at with which they could poke someone's eyes out. Is something wrong? Why'd you stop? Uh, uh, nothing. Nothing's wrong. He followed my gaze to the bird on his shoulder. Hey. Oh, this is Jacques. Isn't he cute? When he doesn't have red demon eyes? He's adorable. Oh, look at him. There they are now. Nice to meet you. Spoke! Yeah! He put his hand on his shoulder. Jock jumped into his palm. Jock is a robot bird. See? LL. Jock's eyes gleamed a dangerous red when he spoke, but nothing else suggested he wasn't a normal bird. It's weird how they decided to make him a robot bird as opposed to just... I, I, actually, I'm not really sure how they would have explained Jock. Uh, in fact, if I hadn't known better, I would have said the red in his eyes was painted on. <laughs> yes, indeed. That's amazing! Jock twitched his head to the side, examining me in return. The more he looked at me, the less afraid I was. What are you looking at? What? What? Nothing, I'm sorry. <laughs> wow, only only this character would be intimidated by a robot bird. Only, only us. Only us. Oh yeah, Jax can be a, a little sassy. A little? That's like his entire premise on the show. 
Who are you calling sassy? I'm not the sassy one. I don't get to feed you. Oh, I don't forget to feed you. I do an awful job impression. Just awful. Doc, that was one time. I was alone and starving in the frozen tundra of the empty world. Loveless. Afraid. Ignore him. I've been bringing him with me to drama club and he's taken a little- and he's taken it a little too well. I see how it is. Oh. I see how this is. Shut me out like I have nothing to add to the conversation. Jock ne retook his place on John's shoulder, this time facing away from us as if miffled. Miffed? Miffed. I said miffled? Don't know why. Don't know why. Uh, he resumed, we resumed our walk towards Poppy Hall. I'm John Tron, by the way. Call me John. Hannah, nice to meet you. Hannah. Just kidding. Hannah. I didn't mispronounce my own name. Shush. Uh, that's a cute name. <laughs> what? Thank you. I'm gonna start crying again. Please don't compliment me anymore. <laughs> uh, so how long have you had Jock? Since middle school. We've been together for four years now. Ain't that right? I'm not listening. Yeah, well, I love him to death. I don't know what I'd do without him. It seems like life would be a lot easier without him, but who was I to say? We arrived at the brick building. A white sign surrounded by poppies declared it to be, unsurprisingly, Poppy Hall. Who would have guessed? Uh, which room are you in? Uh, room 206. Seriously? Yes. That's my homeroom. We're in the same class. <laughs> John laughed and clasped me on the shoulder. It wasn't weird or anything. Wonderful. I guess I'll be seeing you more. Uh, yeah. Right. Poppy Hall was lined with fluorescent lights and Osagao blue lockers. The lack of students milling around in the hallway indicated we were a bit late. Maybe just a dad. We ran up the stairs and made it into the classroom just as the bell rang. My heart caught in my throat. Thankfully, the teacher hadn't come yet. Instead, students clumped into tight pods and milled over the classroom, catching up on vacation news. John. Thank you so much for showing me to class, John. See you later. No problem. I'll see you around. He waved and disappeared into the wriggling mass of students. I glanced around the room, looking for an empty seat. Hannah! Han Hannah! Keep on wanting to call her Hannah. She is not Hannah, she is Hannah. Okay. My peeled herself out from between a cuddling couple. That's weird. Was that JonTron? Were you just talking to JonTron? Yeah! Mai's eyes widened, and I couldn't help feeling a little smug. I realized I didn't know him the way to class after you and I got separated, and he offered to walk me. <laughs> Maya emitted a high pe pressurized squeal. John Tron walked you to class? Oh my gosh, you have to tell me everything! She grabbed me by the wrist and pulled me to an empty desk in the back corner of the room right next to the window. Because the protagonist always sits next to the window. I saved you a seat. I slid in the... I slid in and took off my backpack, hooking it on the side of my desk. I was a little worried the books inside were too heavy for the back to handle, but so far it held up well. Um. Sorry we got separated, by the way. It can get a little chaotic sometimes. So tell me, what happened? What did he say? What did he smell like? Does he have peach fuzz? Is it rough? Is what rough? I don't know. Wait, what? These are very important questions I'm asking. You need to answer them. Was his hair super silky, or did it have the roughness of a dog's coat? I don't know how I would have known that. I mean, what was it, like a five minute span between me getting lost and then him walking me to class? What kind of mischief were we getting into? 
Before I could answer, the door to the front of the room slid open, and a tall woman strolled in. The class went quiet and obediently slid into their seats. My heart beat furiously, blood rushing through my ears. Class? Good morning, class. The teacher's melodious voice swam through the room, calming the buzzing high of students back from their break. My shoulders relaxed and my fear ebbed away. I'm your teacher, Miss Shizuka. Nope, there's no miss there. Shizuka Wakash. Oh my god. Wakahisa. You may call me Miss Shizuka. The emphasis she placed on the word led me to believe calling her Miss wasn't a mistake she would take lightly. I keep on accidentally clicking outside of the window. Some of you might have noticed that we have a new student this semester. A hail of murmurs passed through the class. Some people glanced at me. Nope. There was the fear again. Would you like to come up and introduce yourself? Alright, and I think this is a good place to stop. I will introduce myself to the class next time. Thank you all for watching. In case you are wondering, there's a like button down below. Thank th thanks for watching, but there's a like button. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.